Hey y'all, today I'm going to be showcasing the material integration that I talked about last time. I've been working on it for, I don't know, maybe a week and a half and it's not perfect and there's some things that I want to fix, but it's in a pretty good state, at least to show off what I've been working on. So we're starting off here in just a little test scene I created to showcase a few different materials. And we can look around and see that we have image textures, we've got a little bit of plastic, I don't know, maybe maybe a rubbery, I don't know exactly what it is. And then a little bit more of a mirror finish where we can actually see some light reflection off of it. But I don't have any sort of HDR sky map or anything like that, so there's no real reflections going on right here that at least we can see a background or anything like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these materials. So if I select this cube here, you can see that there is now a new collapsible menu called Material Properties. And if we select that, we can see the active material, which right now is just itself. On import of an OBJ, we create a new material with that material name, and we give it a default base color that we can then edit later. But for the sake of it, let's go ahead and create a new material, and we'll just call it flat, flat black, and then we'll throw it under the flat directory. Now you can see that we have created that material, at least in the UI, but to confirm that, let's go ahead and go to our assets folder, materials, and then we see flat, and then flat black, which was just created. And it looks something like this. So off rip, we just get that friendly name and a base color. So if we wanna change something, we can just go ahead and select it, and then we can manipulate this base color here. And I wanted to make it a flat black, so we'll go ahead and give it that. Actually, we'll go full black, which I know in PBR you shouldn't really ever do. And then, there we go. Now, we can do a few things with this. We can reset it back to the default value that I've at least arbitrarily set, which is white in this case. Or we can totally remove the field, which also resets it back to default, but that actually removes it from the, the RON file here, the material file. So when there's no fields present, we only have the friendly name. And then as soon as we add in a color, we get the color back. So this is a way where we can keep the UI cleaner as well as the RON file cleaner. So here's this base color, and let's go ahead and add something new. So let's go roughness, and then we'll make it, uh, we'll make it no roughness. And then actually let's add metalness as well. Let's give it a metal sheen to it. So there we go. And now if we tab back over to our flat black dot Ron, we see roughness at zero and metalness at 0.83. Let's bring it up just a little bit. I really want to get reflections working, but I, I haven't figured out what I need to do for that at all. But you can, or sorry, reflections. I mean, the HDR, background, skybox, map, and all that, you can see that there actually are reflections on, on this because it's now kind of a metal black. So we can we can grab this blue. Where is this blue? Oh, I didn't have that uh, turned on. And we can see, yeah, we can see it kind of reflect off of that, which that looks pretty nice. It's kind of a midnight blue with that look. So there is how we can add a new material and then edit it just a little bit. And this also works with different textures. So as we can see here on my default material, which is just exactly that, it's what everything will fall back to if there isn't anything present. We have our base color set at white and then a base color texture of just a basic engine grid, which I found online and I can link below. But with this, that's, that's pretty much it. There isn't a whole lot more to it maybe a little bit of metadata here, which I didn't showcase. I don't necessarily want to change that, but we can change we can change our friendly name. So now we've got flat black and then flat black in here, which it is not changing the disk path. This is purely for the front end, what it looks like in here. And then that, oh, that was also using flat black. I didn't know that. Wait, oh, we have two flat blacks. <laughs> so... That's good to know. I was a little confused there. I didn't know I had changed the metadata on the other one, I guess in a previous recording that I didn't keep. So 
we can select this material and you can see in here we have a drop down of all the different loaded materials and actually while we're on that note what I'll say is when we import in a scene so by default that's just on app load for me it loads all of the materials inside of the materials folder into the scene so you can see earlier today I was recording and I named it black and then in here you can see flat black dot wrong as well as our new one flat flat black <laughs> but in here see we could search uh, and then you can see the path here which is under the folder flat with the name black or under the folder flat with flat black and it's kind of a mouthful right there but hopefully you can at least see what's going on here so if I wanted to call this one more of a more of a rubber let's just call it rubber now when we go in here we search black you'll still get the, the path name because that's still a uh, indexable but you'll see rubber versus flat black now hopefully this will change relatively soon because I do not have a resource tab so right now there's no way to like drag and drop or see your loaded materials in the scene besides this drop down so in the future like I said you'll be able to drag and drop and like navigate to different files within a tab so something more akin to unity or unreal being able to like parse through things and edit them via an inspector and all that but for right now this is the stop gap while I was just getting materials set up so here's our rubber and we can edit this make actually rubbers I don't know maybe something a little bit more like that and just for the sake of it I want to showcase this as well so I added a new gizmo which it's not really a gizmo it's just a pointer so whenever you're trying to edit something or you just want to get it out of the way you can hit Q and Q will just remove the gizmo visually but you can still keep it selected that is your object selected and you can still select stuff so I'm still selecting new entities but don't have a gizmo visible and then yeah that's that's pretty much it on the material front these are all of the standard material fields for Bevy I just copied them into my definition that is now serializable and all that with my material files. And I guess moving on to something else that I changed just in the meantime, I was fixing some bugs and I kind of got carried away and I didn't want to keep looking at the viewport grid that I created while I was like editing materials and whatnot. So now what we can do is we can actually show the grid or not. So kind of going along the same path of being able to hide that gizmo, trying to clean up the interface when we want it clean so we can edit this grid. And we can also turn the like visibility of how far it goes from the camera. So by default, it's relatively far, but if you, uh, you just want it really close to the camera, maybe not one, <laughs> you can do that as well. And then you can go basically out forever but I think I keep it at around 50 and then the grid size as well. So one is just one unit like default engine measurement. I'm not entirely sure what that's going to correspond to maybe a meter, but we can turn it way down or way up as well. So that's a pretty handy option. Keep that at one. And then lastly, we can change the grid color. If you want something a little bit more fancy, maybe a, a blue like that. Yeah, I kind of like that midnight blue actually that that looks pretty good but what we can do is i will showcase actually yeah i'll just go to 100 we can write this to the config file and then make sure i've got uh got this up when we close it out and then i load back into the engine and if i had a load here i don't know what it's stuck on there we go now you can see we have our settings persistent. So we can turn those on and off and then save that. Actually, that, that blue does look pretty good. I, I like that, but I'm going to keep that off. So yeah, these have been just a few of the updates I've been working on and I'm not entirely sure my next project. I've got a lot of different things that I want to work on, but I'm not entirely sure which one I'm going to be working on next. I might just do some cleanup 
and quality of life improvements. And let me know what you guys want me to see or what you guys want me to work on because I'm open to suggestions because I have so many things. There's not any particular priority for me right now. So yeah, if you guys want me to work on something, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.